Okay, meeting started recording. Lovely. Oh, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the Thornbrook and Selly Park Ward Forum um, online again, uh, because that seems safer and easier in the circumstances. Uh, things have changed so many times. You, you don't know if you're coming or going when uh, when organising meetings these days. Uh, so I'm Bridget Jones. I'm one of the two ward members. Karen McCarthy is the other ward councillor who is waiting on the screen. Um, so it's so a welcome to everyone. Um, notice of recording, I just need to, to let you know uh, we are recording the meeting for live and subsequent broadcast. Um, just so that heads up to anyone uh, taking part. It's so that anyone who missed it tonight can download it off the council website and watch it back if there's nothing left on the telly to watch. Um, so that's just a heads up for anyone participating tonight. Um, we've got a few things on the agenda. So let's dive straight into it. Uh, the first one, hot topic, is COVID update. Um, you've probably seen on the last few weeks, COVID has been up and down in our ward, largely due to the student uh, population coming and going. Uh, but someone who can express it far better than me is Paul from Public Health, who is with us. Um, so, Paul, over to you to talk about, um, talk about COVID. Thank you, Councillor. Um, so what I was hoping to do is I'll just talk a little bit about sort of the, the general Birmingham position where we are, uh, where we are relative to sort of some of the selected other areas of the country, uh, a little bit of the local information and then a quick refresh of the guidance around um, what we can and can't do at the moment, given the, the, the move to step four um of the of the roadmap sorry i'm getting distracted by things popping up on screen uh the move to step forward the roadmap uh which obviously came into effect today um and then open to any questions and answers so in terms of birmingham as a whole um our seven day case rate up until the end of last week was 120 cases per 100,000 people um compared to 408 uh, the week before so it's a 27 percent increase so it has gone up. We're now the 49th highest in the UK when we compare ourselves with other uh, upper tier local authorities. Um, uh, that increase is across all age groups, uh, but larger among smaller age groups. So we're seeing more young people. Um, my personal opinion is that's a bit of a side effect of the, the way the vaccine has been rolled out and that it'll take a bit longer to reach those younger age groups. Um, also increased in all ethnic groups. Um, compared with the previous week, um, although some of those might not be statistically significant because there's some, some small numbers involved there. Um, that 520 per 100,000 is broadly similar to um, other authorities within the West Midlands uh, on the whole. Um, it's around 450, around sort of 450, 550 is kind of sort of where most authorities are sitting. A uh, couple of outliers, Solihull is at a much higher case rate, uh, 857. So if you have family and friends in Solihull, I'd recommend not going to visit them quite quite at the moment. Uh, and Herefordshire is a lot lower. It's almost, it's an under half where Birmingham is. Um, comparing ourselves to the core cities, um, again, it's a similar sort of position. Uh, a, most of the cities are around that sort of 500 mark. Um, I think we're actually towards the lower end of the the eight core cities um, and places like Bristol uh, and Leeds of oh and Newcastle uh, at a much higher rates 630 700 800 oh sorry that was just back from us. um in terms um, of raw numbers it just sorry, is, is that someone coming in for a question or I, I think not. To... Uh, no? Carry okay. on, Paul. Okay, thank you. Um, in terms of uh, Bournebrook and Sully Park, um, actually has the second uh, lowest uh, cases per 100,000 in the city at the moment. Um, so 530, around 530 cases, sorry, around 240 cases per 100,000 compared to 530 or thereabouts for the city. Um, as uh, Councillor Jones mentioned just before I came on, um, that's actually a marked difference from, I think it was the late July, uh, sorry, late June, early July period where there was quite a significant spike in numbers. Uh, but that seems to have completely resolved itself now and it's gone back to a, a broadly commensurable position to where it was before. 
Um, in terms of va vaccination updates, it's actually really good numbers across the board, higher than Birmingham for pretty much every age group. Um, again, except in those, those younger age groups, so those age 40 and over, 30 and over, are showing some, some lower numbers. Um, bizarrely, we're actually showing better numbers in the 18 and over. Um, so there's a bit of a mixed picture in terms of vaccinations. Um, in terms of where the cases have landed, they are in the 20 to 39 age group for the most part. Um, around, well, over 80 percent were in that age group. So that, that's the age group that's of most concern to us at the moment um, within this ward. Um, just wanted to briefly touch on the change in the. Sorry, bear with me, the change in the um, current guidance. So a lot of things have now been removed from being legally binding. However, what we would say is that we'd still want you to exercise that caution. Um, if you, you know, in terms of going back to work and, and ceasing working from home, the expectation and um, the expectation is that that is a phased return and it's a slow approach. It's not all moved back into the offices immediately. Similarly, with social interactions that um, you, you limit your contact at first, you know, try and meet outside if you can, especially in weather like this, enjoy it while it lasts. Um, and try and limit the sort of the numbers and the frequency of your contacts as we sort of ease our way back into 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 uh, into the new normal that's coming on the next step. Um, because what we don't want to do is undo some of the hard work that's been happening over the past 18 months um, and see ourselves having to go back into more stringent restrictions um, when the next review comes along in August or September. Um, what else did I want to touch on? Uh, we just don't, don't need to stay two metres apart from people. You can now meet in any numbers. Um, there's some talk at the moment, but it's not, I think it's only coming out today, but there's some talk around COVID passports. Um, anecdotally, I've heard they're not a particularly popular concept, but they might become a necessary one from, from what uh, the Prime Minister was saying today. Um, and it may be that they get introduced around September. So there's, there's no need for those at the moment, but they are potentially being introduced later down the line. Um, we still very much encourage people to have lateral flow tests twice weekly. Uh, you can get them at pharmacies, supermarkets, and you can order them online. I will post a link afterwards to where you can order them online. Um, they are delivered within 48 hours, well, maximum of 48 hours. Whenever I've ordered mine, they've been 24. So it's a pretty, pretty quick, slick service. Um, it's still a requirement to isolate if you have symptoms uh, and also book yourself in for a test. Uh, again, I'll post a link afterwards around how to book an appointment online for a, a full uh, PCR test. Um, if you get a negative test, you can go back to resuming normal activity if you feel well enough. If it's positive, isolate for 10 days as well as all of the, the contacts that you've made over that point should be isolating as well. I touched on the vaccination rates in, in the ward uh, and across the city. I think they, they do seem very good in the ward. Uh, but I don't think that's a reason to be complacent. Um, again, I'll post some links for where you can book your vaccinations um, and how you can sort of, uh, and I'll also post the uh, vaccination centres and drop-in centres as well. I think I've got all those links to hand. So after I finish speaking and doing q and I'll unfortunately I'm going to fill the chat up with a bunch of links for people. Um, that was everything I wanted to touch on, I, uh, I think. Um, but I'm more than happy to take any questions if people do have them. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, just a reminder to everyone present, we are recording this. So if you keep your cameras off, if you're not presenting, uh, you won't end up on the the, the uh, recording for the website. Um, that's really helpful, Paul, thank you. Um, as you say, our ward has gone up and down. We had the surge in student numbers and we were top of the top of the charts for the city uh, and then the plummet again after they've gone home. Uh, we've got a couple of questions in the chat, which I'm going to ask. If anyone wants to ask a question, pop it in the chat or um, use the little raise hand function at the top. Uh, it should be a little smiley face with a raise hand next to it you can press on. Uh, got Meg from the Community Wardens first. Uh, she was just asking for clarity on how many cases we've got at the moment in the Bournebrook area. So actual raw number of cases. Bear with me. As of so over the course of 10th to 16th of July, 
there were bear with me i'm having to quickly run back through my data pack uh 60 reported cases over the course of that week uh which equated to around 240 240 per 100,000 compared to 530 for birmingham so less than half the case rate of birmingham as a whole uh, but yeah, in terms of raw numbers, 60 actual persons, 60 actual cases over the course of the week. Thank you. That's really helpful. And then we've got um, Sarah Savage um, in the chat has asked, is the decrease in COVID cases expected to be due to students moving home? I think you've confirmed that. I think we have. We, we, uh, well, I actually didn't have a theory on this. I, 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 uh, I sort of grew up around the area, but I haven't been been back there in a while. My family moved my remaining family from there moved out quite a while ago so i'd actually forgotten how much of a student area it was to be fair um i don't think it was when i was there um but um it, it as ever with these things in public health it sounds plausible and it sounds like it you know it could be the explanation what i wouldn't want to do is 100 percent say that that is a fact um but it feels biologically plausible that if you have that many people moving around interacting uh, within those those you know those shared and student accommodations, um, it feels what we would call biologically plausible that that would be the the root cause. But I wouldn't want to claim it as an absolute fact. I like that as a phrase, biologically plausible. It's um, <laughs> yeah, the area has shot up in student numbers in recent years, which is uh, a whole other issue, which we'll come yeah. on to later, no doubt. Uh, John, just a uh, warning, you've got your uh, your camera on. We are recording this, so uh, if you don't want to be on the camera for the recording, if you could turn your camera off, you'll you'll avoid that. Any other questions for Paul? I'm not seeing any hands or anything in the chat. Does anybody want to ask anything? No, I'm not seeing anyone. Um, so really, it's just to reiterate on COVID to everyone. It's not gone away. It's alive, it's around us. I know it's Freedom Day. I'm still wearing my mask in the shops and on public transport because I don't want to catch COVID and I don't want to give anyone COVID. Um, it is still a very much, very much here. Um, so we're asking everyone to be sensible. Um, just because you don't have to follow the rules uh, anymore doesn't mean that there's no merit in following them. Uh, please be sensible. Keep on uh, wearing a mask if you think you're in a crowded area um, and be respectful of people around you. And the number one thing you can do is get your vaccinations or encourage other people to do so. Um, there's sites all over Birmingham where you can get them. Uh, please keep spreading the word. Yep, Test, right. testing and vaccination are the two big key take homes, please. Um, I'm just going to pop, uh, I'm going to drop some links in the chat as promised, and then I might need to shoot off if that's OK, Councillor. That's absolutely fine. All right, grand. Thank you very much. Take lovely. care all. Have a nice evening. Bye bye. Have a lovely one. Thanks ever so much. Right. Um, and just as Paul has gone, we've got a question for him. What does older people mean in your title? Uh, usually over 65 in the public health updates I've seen, but Paul is typing in the chat, so I'll let him he'll him tell me if if we're wrong and I'll move on to the next thing if that's OK. Uh, right, so after COVID, um, and Paul will post those uh, those links in the chat in just a sec, on to another hot topic, which is exempt accommodation or so so-called supported living, uh, which is a huge issue in our ward and that we've been talking to some of the residents groups about. Uh, I'm going to hand over at this point to Karen McCarthy, uh, who has been leading some of the work on it uh, for the council and can tell us some more forward with this. So Karen, over to you. Right. Um, I think from who's here uh, that most people understand uh, what this so-called supported or exempt uh, accommodation um, is. Um, this is shared accommodation that doesn't fit within the, the definition of um, an HMO. Um, and what it's exempt from is rent control um, by virtue of it, it providing, supposedly providing support um, for the tenants who are vulnerable in some way. But it's also exempt from 
planning restrictions, uh, so it's exempt from the, the Article 4 um, that we worked so hard to get, and by we, I mean residents and ourselves, uh, and it's exempt from the need for a licence. It's a problem right across the, the city. Uh, we've had some particularly nasty cases um, in Surrey Park of uh, people who undoubtedly need support, um, but it's not being provided and their behaviour uh, is causing great distress, not just concern, very real distress to, to neighbours. So we've had a number of discussions on that in these meetings and there's been a series of, of road shows that, that Councillor Thompson has dealt with. Uh, but it's on the agenda tonight to, to talk about multi-agency working. Now, there's two sorts of multi-agency working. There's the, the professional agencies. And then there's those plus the, the people affected. So if I can just um, report on uh, Sergeant Ludlow's report to, to Selly Park South Neighbourhood Forum last week the professional multi-agency work seems to be going really well um, and I know there's been some activity today as well um, we seem to have got join up at the policy level and the, the ground level um, from the police housing people um, exempt specific uh, specialist um, exempt accommodation people, antisocial behaviour officers uh, and the, the people who deal with the benefits. Because although the council doesn't commission this type of service um, from these providers, um, we do have to process the housing benefit claims. And it's worth noting, if you're new to the subject, uh, there is no public register of these properties in the way that there is uh, for um, HMOs that are large enough to need a licence. Um, but we can um, work out which properties are being used in this way um, from uh, that, those rent figures. But obviously that's about individuals rather than the property. So it it's, um, has to be very carefully um, used by officers. So at that level, um, things seem to be working well. As I say, I'm aware that there have been some, some visits today. I don't know if Sarah's been involved or whether she's on late and it, the, that work yeah. happened on early's. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, have you got a microphone, Sarah? I've found a microphone in the camera. I won't switch the camera on. I'll save you from that. Um, I did go to a property on Warwoods Lane today where residents have raised quite a lot of concerns in the past and we've also had reports of antisocial behaviour and um, I met with the housing provider who was able to introduce all of the residents to me I was able to share those concerns on behalf of other residents um, and she did inform me the main offender has been evicted which is great news for the people he was causing trouble for and um, I'm going to feed back some concerns to the provider about the standard of the accommodation and just getting it up to scratch safety wise. And she also knows about the exempt team and the possibility of a multi agency visit. So they'll be looking to keep their standards high. That's great. Thank you. But the other question um, that we've put it on the agenda tonight for is if um, particularly residents groups but also people in those areas that aren't represented um, wanted us to, to set up um, regular meetings between representatives of the, the agencies and we wouldn't get a full set, you never do in that situation, um, and residents. Um, Selly Park South have led on this work and in, in trying to, to work out and discuss with the police what might be done uh, in terms of information uh, both to 
neighbours of these properties and the tenants themselves. Um, and it, it kind of feels as if there's a, a split between Sully Park and Bourne Brook on this, um, that the issues are slightly different. Um, so if we were going to um, set up such a meeting, um, then we would probably start with the Sully Park side. So um, Sully Park South, Sully Park Avenues, Spoa, Warwoods Lane and um, Munts Park area. Uh, and um, try and pick up any interested individuals that aren't covered by those. How does that sound? I can see Chris is on the, the call. Chris, you were very keen that this should happen. Do you want to say something? Chris from Sully Park South. Can you hear me? Yeah, can hear you now. Yeah, um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yes, I mean, we're just very keen because in our area we've got a, a mixture of exempt accommodation and HMOs that are causing residents lots of issues. So yes, we have been talking um, to both our councillors and Sergeant Ludlow. Um, so what we're discussing doing is um, as Karen said, going to visit um, the exempt accommodation, give them information about um, their rights, uh, what they're entitled to in terms of support, also their responsibilities to the community and information about um, bin days and various other things that would help the rest of the community, uh, but also visiting their neighbours and giving their neighbours information about if they're having trouble with um, their neighbours, um, who they can go and complain to about it, uh, where they can get support. And obviously, if we can have a, a regular meeting uh, between the various agencies and the residents groups, then we can learn what works, what doesn't work. Also um, have some sort of feedback loop in there in terms of whether things are progressing, whether actions that we take from these discussions are being followed up on um, and we're actually making progress. So from my point of view, the more groups that are involved and the more learning we will get and uh, hopefully the more progress we'll make. That's my view. Anybody else got a view on that? I'm happy with Bridget to, to set something up for the, the Sully Park side. It's slightly different on the Bourne Brook side because what we've got is um, the rough end of the student market uh, being turned into exempt accommodation. Um, not in such great numbers at the moment, but it probably needs a different approach. I'm not seeing anyone specifically on that, so I'll, I'll take that as silence is assent to us setting up a meeting and, and seeing how we go forward. Uh, before we move on to the next item, has anybody got any questions or points they want to raise on exempt? Accommodation. I'm not seeing any hands or anything in the chat for that matter. Um, but I do know it's something that loads of you are passionate about and rightly very concerned about because many of you have phrased it with as many times. Hence, it is on the agenda tonight, and hence, hence we we keep working away at it. Darren's typing something. But I can't see what it is yet. Darren is also from Sully Park South. OK, Darren's happy. Lovely. Yeah, we'll go ahead with that then. We'll probably come back to Darren and Chris just to check we've got the right people on the call when we, we do that and we'll invite the other organisations as well. Fantastic. Lovely much more to do then. So I'll move us on to the next agenda item then, uh, which is road safety. Uh, again, this one's been a bit of a roller coaster over the last year. We saw the roads go quiet during COVID. Uh, traffic around the city, as many of you will have noticed, is now pretty much back to or above pre-COVID levels. 
Um, it's not quite as pronounced at rush hour time because fewer people are back in the office. Uh, but across the full spectrum of the day, we're at or above pre-COVID levels now of traffic. The bubble has been burst on, um, on active travel. Um, so road safety is now more important uh, than ever. I know there's a number of hot spots around the ward um, where we've got particular issues and me and Karen have sort of a, a mental list in mind. Um, but before we dive into that, we were just really keen to hear from, from people around the ward about what your experiences of roads have been over the last few months as the roads have got busier and busier. Uh, we'd love to hear from you about particular areas you think need focus, where you think behaviours might have changed uh, with drivers and people driving more often uh, and driving differently than they did. Um, and where for you do you think the priorities are um, at the moment? Um, like I say, I've got a list, me and Karen have a list in our heads, but we'd love to hear from you guys as well. Uh, Sarah's got a hand up uh, from the police. So I'm going to hand over to her because uh, the police obviously have a huge role in this in, in enforcement as well um and lots of lots of insight so um sarah do you want to do you want to talk about roads thanks Bridget. i just wanted to firstly raise some concerns on behalf of residents and secondly just explain a bit about what we've been doing to tackle some of the traffic issues so firstly i've had um, a lot of residents their concerns have focused on pershall road mainly outside of the inglenook nursery school um where they've reported cars frequently running the red lights especially during school traffic hours and also cars that have been parked across the pavement opposite the run of shops that are at that location so it would be good to perhaps get some joint enforcement work going in terms of the traffic offences there and I have spoken to some of the business premises before about ensuring their employees are following the law in regards to not causing obstructions but it'd be really good to get the council on side as well and um, secondly i have spoken to traffic enforcement officers whilst i've been on patrol and they'll be looking to do some joint work with me outside the schools come september for idling and for parking obstructions and lastly myself and pcso blackford are planning a number of speeding operations across the ward so we're always welcoming feedback from residents about particular roads they want us to focus on. Fantastic. That's really helpful. And that tallies with our particular worry about the Pershaw Road. I think end to end, um, there's issues with it, but uh, particularly at that end as well. Um, and Karen has posted in the chat around Umberslade and Elmden. Karen, do you want to to fill in on some more around this yep yeah, those were for speed checks and if we're allowed to do community speed checks again i know that, that people would probably want to um do some of those areas as bridget says um Pershaw road is a, a problem end to end uh in terms of speeding and driver behaviour, a um, couple of, of hot spots. Hopefully, uh, Dogpool Lane um, may um, have some suggested works um, related to the development on the, the corner. We'll, we need to be a little bit further down the road before we can ask uh, to bring a proposal to residents. Uh, for comment, um, the the bottom of, of Warwards Lane um, going through to the Cartland Road lights, so we'd have to do something jointly um, with it's Sturchley at that point, isn't it? Um, causes concern, and the other hot spot that, that's on our list is the Rattlebarn Road, Umberslade Road. Uh, junction um, and the risk to school pupils uh, from driver behaviour. Yeah, Chris is agreeing about Pershaw Road speeding, uh, rat running. Chris, you missed a, a treat last week, which was uh, the start of a conversation about whether Study Park South should be a low traffic neighbourhood. 
Um, and whether that is the, oh, you heard, uh, whether that's the answer to people rat running, particularly when they're doing it against the, the traffic restrictions. So that one will run and run, I think. Um, do people have any other hotspots that they would want us to, to look at? Um, there's not necessarily at the moment any immediate funding for these things. Um, haven't mentioned the, the Bristol Road. Um, I'm waiting to hear whether we get anything good out of the Commonwealth Games um, traffic measures. Um, so we'll um, feedback when we've got that, but particularly the Pershaw Road. I've had the Sarah is saying that she's done static patrols um, to Sully Park South and the drivers were mostly residents. That's my experience too. Um, I very often wait for Bridget there and, and try and give the impression I'm taking registration numbers. Um, and the only people that notice are residents who are very embarrassed, usually. Um, uh, no, this isn't the time for potholes, really, Roxy. This is more road, big road safety issues. But the ones in Oakfield Road have been marked up. I understand they're in the schedule. I'll try and get you a, a date for that, um, if you mean the ones um, towards Bournebrook Road. Um, as I say they are marked up so hopefully a, a project is coming forward that we haven't got a date and of course that won't be a, a traffic issue um, to, to manage that um, and I have actually while we're on that one um, raised with highways um, the the issue of how they plan which schemes they're going to do at the same time uh, it's a little bit off our patch, but there was a, a big problem when Moor Green Lane and Shutlock Lane were closed at the same time. And we had a problem more recently when there were works on Rattlebarn Road and the Pershaw Road at the bottom of Warwoods Lane at the same time. Um, yeah. Pretty much um, complete gridlock at the, the time. Um, I've got a hand up from John Gale. Is this on road safety, John? Yes, Karen. Um, you'll recall when we had the initial discussions about residence parking, I did a um, consultation before the council did of a resident in Selly Park. And one of the things that came up was the uh, suggestion that uh, a heavy goods vehicle uh, restriction was put on roads in Selly Park because we get a, a, an amazing amount of heavy goods vehicles using our, our roads. But of course, it was the usual excuse that there isn't any money. Uh, we've got a meeting tomorrow oh. with, no, Wednesday, with representatives of the various groups um, uh, and um, I'm not sure if we've actually got highways there, but we can pick that one up there, John. We'll make a note of it. Thank you. OK, thank you. Anyone else want to raise any particular hotspots that we should be including when we talk about road safety? No, if you think of it after the meeting, ping it over to us and we'll we'll add it in. Back to you, Bridge. Lovely, thank you. Um, right, I don't know if you can see me because my Teams has gone slightly funny, but hopefully you can hear me. Um, so yeah, as Karen says, um, we've got a lot of place on our radar, but anywhere you think we should be looking at that we're missing, keep feeding it in. Even if we can't fix it now, it will go on the wish list of things for uh, for where funding does come up, and it'll help guide us on where we can where we can be doing things. Right, next up, Commonwealth Games Celebrating Communities Fund. This is an exciting one. Uh, Commonwealth Games is coming in uh, a year, a week and two days. 
Um, and we've got some exciting ways communities can get involved. So Karen Cheney is going to talk us through how that might work. Thank <clears throat> Am I on? Yes, thank, thank you, Councillor Jones. Um, uh, yes, some of you may already be aware of the Celebrating uh, Communities Fund, uh, but this is a, a locally based um, a small grants pot which is linked to uh, the Commonwealth Games, which is a £2 million pot citywide and then has been uh, an allocation has been made to each uh, ward. There are three main themes for uh, this money. Uh, one around getting active. That doesn't mean it has to all be very sporty. It can be recreational. It could be walking, gardening, skipping or, or whatever you consider to be uh, recreational, but to encourage local communities to get out and about. The second uh, theme is ready, steady, fun, and this is uh, perhaps to improve communal space and hosting community celebrations leading up to the Commonwealth Games. And the third theme is celebrating culture. Uh, might be community led cultural events, intergenerational activities, links to Heritage Week, perhaps. Um, but those are the three main themes. The um, monies are available both this year and next year, leading up to the Games in, in uh, July, August. The first round has actually now closed. Uh, that went live in April uh, with a closing date of the 1st of uh, July. So I'll come back to that. Um, the second round is will open from the 1st of October and close on the 30th of November. Um, and all activities can, can be at any time leading up to the Games, but can't be after um, the Games. In terms of the Bourneville and Selly Park ward allocation out of that bigger pot, it's just over 22,000 for both rounds. It's uh, 22,200. In addition to uh, the 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 um, uh, the monies, we've actually put into place. Um, a support package for community organisations when they apply for funds, uh, because we, uh, unlike quite a lot of uh, uh, grants that people apply for, um, you don't get uh, much uh, support as, uh, as to whether it meets the criteria, etc. So we really do want um, organisations to succeed and ensure that their application form can be as robust uh, as possible. So we have brought um, two uh, citywide community organisations who deal with community support on board. That's Birmingham Community Matters, which some of you may know, and actually Claire may even be on the call, and uh, Locality, who are a national uh, organisation. And they're supporting community groups to be successful, uh, both with their um, applications and support after that. I will put their website details in the chat box once I've finished, but they've got a, a website full of hints and tips of how to put in a, a successful uh, fund. Um, details on wards, uh, because applications need to meet the, the ward criteria. And um, also they run one-to-one -one sessions with groups and seminars. Um, so that is all on the website, which I will put in the in the chat uh, box. In terms of round one, uh, there has been one application received um, where we're awaiting um, uh, further information. So nothing has been allocated as yet. Thank you, Darren. You take me on to my next point. Um, because at the moment with that one application, we are awaiting further information to come back just to clarify one of the points, but it's actually uh, come for Parks for Play uh, for Coronation Road. Um, in terms of decision making for allocations, 
the um, again wanting to involve the whole ward and those who come to ward forum meetings, residents and key stakeholders. So the decision making for applications will go to special uh, ward meetings um, for participative decision making and these will be set up by the uh, facilitator for uh, Selly Oak constituency, uh, which uh, for this constituency is actually the Neighbourhood Development Support Unit, which is uh, uh, myself and my colleagues. So those meetings will be set up across the city between the end of July through to um, uh, beginning of September. Um, as soon as the details are fully in for the proposal that's gone in, then I will be contacting the councillors for a suitable uh, date and then that will get advertised out to everybody to make those dis the decision on that particular um, uh, proposal. So that that is currently the only one in for um, uh, Bournebrook and S Sully Park. There are a number of proposals that are in your adjacent uh, wards as well, which um, people may still call Selly Oak, but isn't Selly Oak uh, Ward. So there, there will be some others that are fairly close by that may also be um, approved. Um, so in terms of um, anybody who wanted to put in a proposal at those um, those particular ward meetings, the, the proposee would be asked to just make a short presentation of five minutes in whichever format they would like to, might be just talking, they might want to show a video um, and then there'll be a session uh, after that for Q&A and then uh, the decision making would be made um, at the that participative uh, ward meeting uh, straight away. Um, if a ward is particularly techy, you can use some of the gizmos that allow you to do it on your phone or uh, probably people will use the tried and tested uh, version of sticking hands up or writing yes or no in the chat box. In terms of other uh, matched funds, we are encouraging groups to just have a look around to see if there are any matched funding that might uh, support their applications. Um, there is, I think Councillor McCarthy's just mentioned it in the chat box, there is also a, a small grants pot that's called Creative City, which is um, to co-create new artworks to bring communities and artists together. Their first round has also closed, it closed on the 1st of July, but they will also have successive rounds and I will put um, those details on uh, their website on the chat box when I've uh, finished speaking. It may also be that um, some projects may fit into the Selly Oak Neighbourhood Network Scheme criteria if it's um, delivering outcomes for older people. Uh, older people in this case is 50 plus. Um, so there are opportunities to match fund. But all those details as well as the criteria to apply for funds will be on the uh, Birmingham Community Matters website, which I'm also going to uh, put in the in the chat box. Um, so I think, councillors, I think that's a quick whiz through um, the, the funding, but it is a really good opportunity to add value to some of the priorities that are already in the Bournebrook and Selly Park Ward plan, but also to celebrate some of the activities that um, you would like to run in celebration of the great stuff that goes on in, in your community um, with that Commonwealth Games twist uh, to it. So I'm happy to take any questions, Councillor. Exciting stuff. So hopefully your heads are buzzing with ideas of things that you could you could bid for. Uh, we've got a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, what was allocated in July? I'm not sure if that was asked before or after you you said, but do you just want to say again in case it was in case it was uh, 
but when you're on mute. Famous trick that. Um, so nothing's been allocated as yet. There's one proposal in for uh, this ward, uh, which we're still waiting some final uh, details on. So at the moment, there is still the uh, amount of 22,200 available for uh, this ward. Lovely. And just to confirm that, who that bid one, who that bid is for? It's um, for uh, Parks for Play, who have uh, taken over the the management of uh, Coronation Road Play Centre. Lovely. Right, uh, another question in the chat, which was, could City Park South be eligible to hold a community event in the fields? Uh, that does sound like the kind of thing that you could do with this, I think. Yes, it's my little thumb that's just gone up on that one. So ab absolutely. Excellent. Uh, and we do have a gorgeous new mural on Rattle Barn Road as well, uh, which is a lovely example of artwork in the community, as Sarah has posted in the chat. Um, so ideas around that kind of thing as well, all welcome. Has anyone got any questions they want to ask that I haven't posted or ideas they want to road test? And myself and Karen and no doubt Karen will be on hand for guiding any bids people want to put in or, um, you know, sharing ideas and thoughts or putting you in touch with other people who might be able to help. Um, yeah, just need to shout. Can I just, sorry, I should have add, uh, added, the, the grants can go out in three um, amounts. We've done uh, less than a thousand, which would be a very simple process, up to 5,000 and then up to 10,000. Um, obviously, the higher the bid, the more information uh, uh, we will need uh, for that. But they will all go out as small grants through the usual process. Um, that neighbourhood development support unit use. So any there are neighbourhood forums. They it's the same process. Um, if anybody's had a, a a neighbourhood network a grant, it's the same process. Um, so we have tried to keep it as uh, diminished from red tape and bureaucracy as we possibly can, given that it's coming through the uh, city council. Fantastic. And have you got a link to the funds that we could post in the chat for everyone? Yeah, and I, I, sh I can't I can't type and chat at the same time. That's absolutely <laughs> it's beyond my capability, I'm afraid. <laughs> I, I shall do it when I've shut up. Lovely. Right. Final final call for any questions for for Karen. No, we are all busy thinking of exciting ideas. Right, Karen will post the link in the chat in just a moment uh, to to find out more about how this might work. Um, but well, I, I know what you guys are like. I know you all have ideas um, and we're on hand to help uh, if we can. Um, so, so get your thinking caps on. Lovely. It's a nice positive one. Right. And thank you, Karen. So uh, we'll move on then to. Um, OK, did you want to come in? Sorry, just to say, Councillor Jones, we've got Laura Easton here on the call from the Commonwealth Games team who just wanted to talk to people about volunteering during the Games, if she could have a few minutes. You did tell me that at the beginning and I totally <laughs> forgot. I'm so sorry, Laura. Uh, Laura, yes, do you want to talk about volunteering? So many questions about volunteering. It would be great to, great to have you. Yeah, tell us more. Brilliant. Thank you very much and thank you everyone for giving me um, the time this evening to come and talk to you. My name is Laura Easton and I'm the volunteer lead for the recruitment and selection of our Games Time volunteers who will be known as the Commonwealth Collective. So just want to give you a bit more information about what it means to be a, a volunteer at the Commonwealth Games, how you can get involved um, and the types of areas that you um, can volunteer in as well. The Commonwealth Games really is, um, you know, it's it is made by the volunteers that, that come on board and we really want to encourage as many local people as possible from the Birmingham area to get their name in the hat, to apply to volunteer so that they can be part of one of the biggest sporting events um, well, in the world and that has definitely come to Birmingham and the, the West Midlands. It's going to be a real 
celebration of sport and culture and bringing people together next summer um, and we want local people to be at the heart of it to welcome the world. So um, in order to um, become a volunteer, we our applications are open just now. So I'll put the link in the, the chat once I've finished here, but you can apply online via our website. The application takes about 15 minutes to apply. Um, you need to have your photo ID um, and um, upload a photo, but everything else is pretty easy to um, navigate your, your way through the application form. We're looking for over 13,000 volunteers to be a part of the Commonwealth Collective. We do have some criteria where um, you have to be 18 years of age to um, 18 years of age as of the 1st of January 2022. We ask that you're able to speak and read English or communicate in British Sign Language, um, that you attend all the training and that you are and that you are able to volunteer for a minimum of eight shifts. But in return, we really hope that we can give you um, a really, truly unique experience, memories to last a lifetime. We'll give you the full Games Time uniform, um, so that'd be trousers, t-shirt, some sort of warmer jacket, um, raincoat, hat and bag, um, which you get to keep afterwards. All your meals while you're on shift are covered. Um, we would cover your public transport from your home within the West Midlands region to the venue that you would be located during games time as well and we will be able to uh, give you all of the required training so you don't ever have to volunteer before you don't have to have particular skills or experience we are looking for passionate dedicated people who really want to to make a difference and be a part of the team um, so the kind of areas that you can volunteer in are within the sports teams itself. So helping prepare all the different areas for, for the athletes and the, the teams. Um, some of our venues require volunteers as well to be able to, again, prep the venues in a number of different areas. We're looking for volunteers to be part of our protocol team. So welcoming some of the guests and, and dignitaries that would be attending. We'll be looking for volunteers to be part of our transport teams, welcoming people at the arrival and departure hubs, being volunteer drivers, um, being based at athlete villages or within, oh, our lights have just gone out in the office, um, or be based within um, Birmingham city centre itself. So being that first point of contact, directing people around the city, being part of the live sites and cultural zones that we have. So there really is something for everyone. There is more information on the website, um, but if there is any community groups, any networks or any um, people or, or organisations that you would like um, myself or one of the team to come and present to, then please feel free to get in touch. We're more than happy to come and speak to, to anyone or provide you with more information that you can distribute amongst your networks. Um, like I said, the volunteers applications opened on the 1st of June um, and we are expecting them to close around mid-August. Um, so we'll keep you updated on what the, the closing date will be. So there is a, a few weeks left to still um, apply. Um, but that's just the kind of key information on on volunteering at the at the Games. And thank you for putting... <laughs> Oh no, that's the culture one. I um, just saw the Birmingham logo there. So I'll put the, the link to the application in the chat. Fantastic. Thank you, Laura. Has anyone got any questions? Not seeing any hands. Oh, yeah, we've got one in the chat. Uh, Sarah's asking, uh, will volunteers be able to specify what days they can help? Yes, so the um, not not in the application stage, but that's something that we would take into consideration on the when we start to invite you to the volunteer selection centre. Um, so appreciate that it's um, um, almost a year in advance, um, but we would be able to to pick that up with you um, closer to the time. So through the the selection event, um, and then into to next year as well, we'll just confirm that the the days that you're available are the ones that we can schedule you for. That's great. Uh, there's another question being typed. Yes, uh, I can see. <laughs> so we'll wait for that one to come up. Mm -hmm. There's a tremendous opportunity to well, have a great time yeah. and also learn some new skills as well. Here we go. So in terms of volunteering, is there a scheme to obtain references or similar after to help with job applications? Very good question. 
Yes. So what we would like to do, um, there might be a way that we can um, work with references um, if you've worked with a particular team leader or um, what we call workforce manager. Um, but what we do want to um, link up with whatever role that you've been a part, a part of, link up with a skills list. So you would be able to have a kind of record of achievement, if you like, of um, that you completed a certain number of shifts, certain number of training days. These are the skill sets that were involved within the particular role. Um, that you were involved in. So it would have that record of commitment, um, I suppose, loyalty to the programme um, and the uh, the skills that were, were aligned to that particular position. So all of the different positions might be slightly different. If it was a technology role, it might be more of a, an IT focus or if it was a customer service based role, it might be more customer service facing, but you would have that proof of involvement. Um, and then depending on how closely you work with um, the, the 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 team leader or manager that you have within the, the building, there might be more of a, a personal reference that could be arranged there as well. Fantastic. Uh, we've got an offer in the chat. Uh, so Sarah from the police is saying, happy uh, for you to come and do a recruitment event uh, in Selly Oak, uh, the retail park, uh, potentially is a hot, hot place for catching people. Um, Meg from the community yeah. warden says sounds brilliant. Um, of course, this will be open to students as well, won't it? Yes, um, very much so. Very much yeah. so. So we've been liaising with some of the colleges and universities um, about the, the involvement. But yes, um, open to students as long as they're 18 years of age as of the 1st of January 2022. Um, and Sarah, I'll try and pick up with you um, on the, yeah, the recruitment events as well. Lovely. You've generated a lot of interest. <laughs> it is very exciting. Exciting times ahead for Birmingham indeed. It is very exciting. The Commonwealth Games is getting real. Mm -hmm. One year, one week, two days to go. Yeah, you had it. I'm glad you didn't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Right, I think yeah. we've run out of questions. Um, so um, everyone spread the word um, and, um, and uh, let people know how they can get, get involved. I'll put in the Laura, thank Thanks, so everyone. Much. I'll let you get out of the building if they're turning off the lights. <laughs> I know. That's Bye -bye. dedication. Thank you. Right, that then takes us on to the ward plan. So the ward plan is something every ward has. It's where um, every few years we agree a set of priorities uh, that we're going to work on in the ward. Um, and uh, we update you every so often on how that's going. Um, so, Karen, are you going to talk to us about the ward plan? Is it over to you? Yeah, uh, just a matter of um, whether there are bits that need tweaking. Uh, I think we've got five priorities. I'll get to the end and discover we've actually got six, but there you go. Um, we have, as the first one, housing and houses of multiple options. Um, where the, the first point was around supporting uh, the creation of a community development trust um, and a, a program to produce uh, family housing for rent in the ward. Um, I'm aware that the CDT has been uh, formed and registered and the work is continuing um, on um, family housing to rent so we would leave that there was an action point um, about whether this was in the supplementary planning document for Sally Oak which was confirmed that it was um, information um, for residents on HMOs um, and last time we updated it we added in exempt properties um, and we've done work with uh, Councillor Thompson and uh, with uh, residents groups um, around uh, those issues and joint working of agencies through the Bournebrook Project Officers Group. Now that usually uh, does a walkabout um, in July around building issues connected to the HMOs haven't been able to do that um, this year 
because of, of COVID. Um, I hope to pick that up um, in the, the autumn um, to, to have a look. Um, but I know that, that people are reporting uh, what they've seen as they go along. Waste and recycling. Um, an issue around the, the black bag roads, uh, which are mostly uh, Dale, North, George and, and Grange, um, which again has been difficult to do for the, the last year. Uh, monitor general service and level of recycling. Again, um, difficult over the last year, hopefully. Um, if we don't go back into lockdown at some point, then um, we can start as we mean to go on uh, in the autumn. And to support student move out day, um, the action point is down to the, the Guild of Students. Um, many of you will be aware of how difficult that, that was this year uh, with over 200 tonnes of additional waste removed from the streets. Um, the Guild of Students ran their junk busters scheme but couldn't do door-to-door -door collections. Um, there was a lot of extra waste and it was condensed because people were coming back in order to move out. Uh, but it's, I think, fair to say that the worst behaviour was from the landlords because after the point where house keys had had to be returned to, to agents, uh, the waste just kept on coming um, and, and was poorly presented. And huge thanks are due to Fleet and Waste, who got most of it clear by Saturday from the, the Wednesday. So that point definitely needs to remain in the, the ward plan. Um, me back. Uh, third priority, community safety, uh, which was street watch, encourage reporting and encourage joint working. And you've heard about that uh, already tonight. So I think those points stay as they are. Parking. Um, we've spent some time working with residents groups uh, and um, City Council highways on parking schemes um, and the, the ones that are going forward are now almost at the uh, transport um, PRO. Oh. The order that sets up the scheme, my mind's gone blank. Um, before I move on to flooding, I'll just check Um, Sarah's asking about fines for waste bins not being returned to, to properties. Um, my understanding is that the legislation changed just as we were hoping to, to do that. Um, and it couldn't be done because you couldn't prove who'd left them out. But we will go back to, to fleet and waste. Uh, Bridget and I returned a fair few yesterday. Uh, on Rookery Road while we were litter picking. Um, and if people are out and about and want to just return a few, uh, and then we'll work with the wardens. Hopefully this year, um, we'll be able to do the, the work that's been planned for several years um, on those issues as students move in. I will check it with waste enforcement though because that, that would be ideal. Right, the next point was flooding. Um, and this is the one that actually needs a, a new point. Um, this talked about reviewing the Section 19 report, uh, which was the official um, council investigation, the statutory um, report on the 2018. Flooding, I think that's the, the point that can go from there. Kay, if you don't mind making a note of that. Um, we agreed to keep Selly Park North, 
uh, on the plan until the relief channel is tested uh, by heavy rain. Um, it still hasn't been. Uh, it's a two part process to protect Selly Park North. There's work at Harborne Lane to absorb some of the, the Bourne Brook flood water. Uh, and then there's the relief channel, which still hasn't been tested. Um, but there is now talk of some further works to protect the avenues from the, the River Ray. So if we can add a point, um, it's, I've followed it up because uh, it was reported last week to Selly Park South. Um, and there were people there from the avenues um, who were also aware of it. As soon as we've got a proper um, document from the Environment Agency, then we'll share. But if we can add that point, monitor plans uh, for further work to protect the avenues. If that's OK, Kay. Uh, and then oh, we did have six. I was right that there was one that I'd forgotten, which is urban centres consultation, which is to support the CP4SO projects at the old Selly Oak Library and Bournebrook Rec. Um, that probably needs to be um, Community Development Trust in brackets after CP4SO. And then the final point on the plan to note the further heritage work and research on the civic quarter. So that was a, a high speed run through. Uh, the, the one point that I knew needed tweaking was the, the flooding element. Um, that will form the, the basis. Um, of um, allocation of various funds. Barry, where in Bournebrook? Barry's saying the surface water flooding in, in Bournebrook. It's uh, pooling round by the uh, Tiverton gym. Um, it it uh, comes down through the, um, the roads from Rattle Barn and uh, down through Exeter. So there's, there's a and uh, as you know, um, we quite frequently have um, the students swimming in rather stagnant pooled water uh, that, has, that has come down as, and has got um, um, surface su uh, sewage in as well. Yeah, I did ask for both Tiverton and Hubert uh, drain gullies to be checked when there was um, uh, rain, the heavy rain forecast. But there's also Arley as well, which again is consistently gets surface water flooding. Um. Yeah, I don't think it's shifted. Barry, it's shifted to the crossing. Uh, and I'm going to pick that up uh, when highways come in and look at the, the Bristol Road. Um, hang on. I've got. Sarah, that's not actually us, I'm afraid. You'll have to take that one to Wheelie and Sally Oak. Sarah's asking about Harborne Lane and Chapel Lane. And Darren, there is a process, Darren, um, by which um, extensions are assessed for their impact on drainage. Um, I'm not sure what we can put in, but I'll, I'll make some inquiries. Okay, just having a look at any other comments. Um, so, Darren from Sally Park South, um, is asking about the many extensions and their cumulative impact. Yeah, that's the point. I was I was just going to, to pick up rather than check it out and then see if we if we bring it into the next iteration of the the plan. And the same with uh, Sully Park South um, for Dogpool and and for Shoda um, with the the surface flooding. Um, 
yeah, John reports, John Clayton reports on it last week. Okay, so we'll we'll monitor those and see if they need to get to go into the, the plan. Lovely. I think that every that's everything picked up. So um final call for any questions on on ward plan. Now we made it a few years ago, but I think those still broadly reflect our priorities um, with the the additions and updates and changes that Karen has has talked us through. Um, I'm not seeing any hands or anything, so I will take us on then to the final item, which is local updates and AOB. Um, and this is really for any updates on things that you think haven't been covered by the above or any um, any other business anybody anybody wants to uh, to raise while you've got us here. So throwing the floor open, Sarah's got her hand up. Over to Sarah. Um, I just wanted to update residents. I know quite a lot of people have expressed concerns about a particular business, which I can't name, that's storing vehicles on roads around Sally Park. I know it's causing residents some issues with their parking outside homes. Um, I know I've spoken to Care and I think about contacting trading standards and doing some joint work with them. The issue we're having as a neighbourhood team at the moment is around enforcement. We're limited in our powers. If the vehicles are taxed, they are legally parked. Um, driving offences, they have to be seen to be penalised for those. Um, but we have spoken to the business on a number of occasions. I know trading standards have advised them as well. If residents have any ideas for how we can, within our powers, address this is issue, I'm very open to listening to them. Okay, thank it's, you. Uh, can I just add um, that it's a uh, it's an IT um, issue. If they had for sale notices on them. Um, action could be taken by trading standards, but it doesn't look as if the, the laws kept up with how people actually sell um, cars these days. Um, and what it needs um, is to be able to say that it's on their website and therefore it's for sale. Uh, and we need to uh, check out whether that actually can be used for enforcement uh, purposes. And if not, we can't be the only people suffering it. So lobby for a, a change in the, the law on that. One well, of many areas where the law doesn't keep pace with reality. Uh, Barry Toon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just a quick follow up to uh, Karen's mention about the library. Um, we're uh, Windswept uh, Arts are doing a uh, an arts display on on the library in August, um, and we'll be uh, mounting some temporary uh, statues of local um, people uh, on the front of the library uh, uh, railings. So um, uh, we're doing a Budlier clearance uh, in the first week of um, August to uh, enable the statues to be clear to be seen. Um, so. If anybody's around on the 5th of August, uh, we'd be happy to take your uh, your assistance. And uh, we have got some insurance cover. So uh, if you do injure yourself with a secretary, uh, you can claim. So, uh, obviously, you won't, but uh, the, the offer is, is there if you want to. Lovely. And uh, Sarah has said to contact the neighbourhood team. They might be able to help. What times, Barry, we're being asked? Four o'clock. And that was the 5th of August, did you say? Yeah, Thursday, 5th of August. Four on the 5th. We haven't reported on the new member of our team, have we, Bridget? We have not. Do you want to do the honours? We've acquired, and, and Barry has prompted me to say this, because if it's any help, um, uh, we can bring it along. Uh, we've acquired a litter trolley who is now called, um, been named by uh, some local children, Lotta Litter 
trolley. Um, it, it's a smaller version of what the street sweepers um, do, uh, use. So it'll take a couple of um, bags um, on um, sort of square hoops with handles that can be taken off, got a dustpan and brush, um, a spade and a, a thing for, for digging stuff up. Um, and we've also got loads of, of bin bags. Actually, we've got loads of gloves, if that helps, for dealing with the, the bad layer. Um, Yeah, are they at St Edward's, Sarah? Sarah's saying the junior PCOs um, would like love Lotta. And um, yeah, so we've currently got one group that's just finished training at St Edward's, and it is a group of sixty. So we've got quite a lot of budding volunteers there, and and we're kind of looking at going into all our other Selyout schools within the next school year due to the COVID restrictions. Very exciting. Well, I'll try and pick a slightly cooler day for it than yesterday. Karen and I were roasting. In the... Oh, it was so hot I could barely get the gloves on. It was, uh, yeah, not not the best day for doing it. And... We were up and down uh, Rookery Road picking up some of the, the leftovers from, uh, from uh, the student move out, which was disgusting. Absolutely. Yeah, um, if we're going to encourage um, younger people to, to do it, uh, it, it's probably as well just to pre-scan where you're taking them, um, even in the areas uh, that aren't um, obviously student-y. Um, Meg, the, the trolley will eventually be based at... Um, the Bournebrook Pavilion, uh, when there's enough people around um, to be able to access it, Claire Bent's offered to, to store it there so the, the wardens can um, deal with it, borrow it as much as anyone else. Um, yeah, I think Chris is referring to what we'd hoped would happen working with um, Keep Britain Tidy, who've also struggled during COVID um, to deliver, deliver their normal level of, of activity. Um, I'll chase that up um, with Fleet and Waste and, and see what we can do. There is also the uh, scheme to have mobile recycling um, units, which we need to um, work out how it, it would fit into um, our strategy for the, the next year um, uh, and support residents rather than um, be abused by landlords. Roxy's suggesting a best front garden competition. That would be good, not at the moment Ooh. when the landlords are filling them with building waste. But yeah, let's pick that one up as well. Okay. Right, I think that's everything from the chat picked up. I am scanning through it. Um, and as Karen said, Chris, we've got a number of measures coming in to prevent fly tipping. We've invested we're investing in CCTV cameras and um extra enforcement officers as well. Uh, but it's pretty recent investment, so you, you won't have seen those necessarily hitting streets yet, but it is on its way. Um, and we are also publishing a wall of shame to shame people who have been fly to caught fly tipping uh, because it's not on. Right, I'm running out of hands and uh, barriers. Is that a legacy hand? Is that a new hand? It's a legacy hand. Not to worry. It's 20 past eight on a beautiful evening. Um, and I don't know about you, but it's boiling where I am. Um, so in the absence of anyone bringing anything else up, I'm going to thank everyone so much for your time this evening. It's lovely to see you virtually. Um, very much look forward to seeing you in real life. Uh, keep on staying safe. Um, 
encouraging people to carry on wearing masks in indoor areas and on public transport because it protects you and the people around you. Cases are still rising in Birmingham when it comes to COVID. Um, so please keep wearing masks, keep getting tested and um, encourage anyone who hasn't had the vaccine yet to, uh, to take it up. I've had two and I can confirm it doesn't hurt. Karen? Yeah, coming from Darren. Oh. Now wait for... Oh, thank you, Darren. Lovely. So I look forward to seeing you all um, soon in real life as ever. Um, if you want to get hold of me and Karen, um, our email addresses are name.name .name at birmingham.gov.uk or you can find us on Twitter and Facebook and various other places. Always welcome to come out and do walkabouts or meet you or do whatever happens to be legal this week. Um, and uh, we will see you all soon. Uh, keep in touch. Thank you to everyone. Take care.